Hello and welcome along to Mondo Chalavet Movies, my name is John and this video is going to be my complete collection of Hammer horror films. I've previously made some videos about Hammer movies before but this is the first time I showed the whole lot in one go. I don't own every Hammer horror film, I do want to get as many as I can but I do own all the Dracula and the Frankenstein films and to make this video a little bit different I'm going to show these all off on order of release. So the earliest Hammer film I own is from 1953, it's called The Four-Sided Triangle. It can be found on the bonus features of the Curse of Frankenstein disc. Now, I remember watching this and it's more like a little sort of sci-fi movie. I wouldn't class it as a horror film. It's just I just thought I would note that, that it's an actual, you can get this full movie, which you can't really, it's out of print now, try and buying it. But you can get it as an extra feature on this uh, this great disc here. So that's just a little heads up on that if you wanted to go and buy this disc. If you wanted to find that movie, it is available on here, which you can get quite cheap these days. So that's a four-sided triangle. So next from 1957 is The Curse of Frankenstein. You could say this is the first ever Hammer horror film, like we all know and love. This has got all of the, the gore in it, if you can call it gore, but it was very gory for its time. It's uh, in colour, which was the first time these movies, these, these horror films were in colour, and they are very bloodthirsty for the time and it was probably the first time that you ever saw special effects of graphic surgeries not that it's really that bad by our standards but from 1957 you had to believe that this was pretty out there and it started off start the ball rolling in this hammer horror gothic color beautiful technicolor presentations of these movies so that's curse of frankenstein so next up was in 1958's dracula Obviously, you can see where Hammer were going with this. They thought, right, we're going to really do these movies and do them with blood and gore. So Dracula is played by Christopher Lee, which I think has already made his own. But there was a lot of trials and tribulations on that, which I'll tell you about a little bit later on. So this was the first Dracula movie that they made. And there was some extra stuff that was found in a, in a Japanese print somewhere. And they put it back in this movie. You can tell the quality goes. It's the sort of... Some of the uh, some of the, the gore scenes in it were lost, and they were put back in this movie. So this is the full and cut version. It was great to get this for the first time fully uncut. So that's 1958's Dracula. Next up is 1958's The Revenge of Frankenstein or Frankenstein 2. You could say this indicator. I listen quite a lot of stuff to do with um, with with Hammer, and they're doing a great job of it as well. Also, the Frankenstein Baron Frankenstein is played by Peter Cushing. He's played by Peter Cushing in the, in the first movie as well. It's a great spin on Baron Frankenstein because he's a bit of a swine, actually. He's not the dashing type of uh, doctor that you find in the Universal uh, movies. He's a different kettle of fish in this one. And it's a great performance by uh, Peter Cushing. He's done some amazing work as Baron Frankenstein in his movies. So that's The Revenge of Frankenstein. Next up is 1959's The Hound of the Baskervilles. Now this was released by Arrow. This is a rare release. In fact, it's the only one I know that Arrow have done of a Hammer movie. This stars Peter Cushing and Christopher Lee, so you know when you're getting Hammer, Peter Cushing, Christopher Lee, you're on all winner. And I haven't watched this movie. I haven't watched this movie actually uh, since I've got it, and I've had it for ages. I was waiting for me and the devs are going to watch it. It's just we haven't got around to it yet. But I know I've watched it back in the day, and I really enjoyed it. And I think I'll enjoy it a lot more because, to be honest, it's not really. It's a it's a um, Sherlock Holmes movie. It's not really like a horror movie, but I think it's the way that they shoot these movies it makes it feel kind of like a horror movie, even though it says on here it's an A, so it's like a PG. So there's a few of these Hammer titles I've yet to watch, so that's The Hound of the Baskervilles. Next up is 1959's The Mummy. Now, that's Hammer making the big three, Dracula, Frankenstein, The Mummy. And they didn't do The Invisible Man, believe it or not, which is something now I think about is a bit strange, but they never went down that, that route. This is a great film. Very, It's an amazing uh, from Second Sight, an amazing edition, one of the one of the best ones out there. I don't know if Second Sight will do any more of these. I hope they will, because they look absolutely great on the shelves. And this is a, this is the type of presentation we love from Hammer. Again, you've got the great duo of Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing. So that's the Mummy. Next to release from 1959, The Man Who Could Cheat Death. This is quite a good movie. Now the school here. That's, that's an equally good movie. It's got Christopher Lee in as well. I don't think it's got Peter Cushing. Yes, it has got Peter Cushing and Christopher Lee. That's a great movie, that. But it's not a Hammer movie. It's a, it's an amicus film. But the Hammer movie here, it's quite strange to have these two, the two rival companies, Amicus and Hammer, on the same disc. So this movie 
is the often told story of a man who finds tries to find the secret to everlasting youth, and that's about how he how he comes by that. Great movie actually, nice colour on it as well. Although the print on this is a bit scratchy, I know it's been released re-released by Eureka, so I imagine that one would look much better. So that's the man who could cheat death. Next from 1960 is the Brides of Dracula. Now this you could see this is Dracula too, and you'll notice that Christopher Lee's not in it, although I think Peter Cushion is. And unfortunately, this is the sequel to the original Dracula, but it's a different sort of kind of vampire. It's not Dracula. It's a different one. Now, at this point, Christopher Lee had sort of turned his back on the role of Dracula. He was doing other things. More about that down the line. But this one was made because I think they wanted to make another sequel to the amazingly popular Dracula. And he wouldn't do one, so they had to like come up with a different story. It's a, it's a, it's not a bad film. I don't mind it at all. I mean, Peter Cushion comes back as uh, Von Helsen, which is his character from Dracula. It's, it's not a bad movie. I do like it, but it's lacking Christopher Lee. So for that reason, it gets marked down a couple of points. It's one of those ones where you just think it is what it is, and that's that's how it worked out. So that's the Brides of Dracula. Next up is 1961's The Curse of the Werewolf. Now, weirdly enough, you would think that they would have done loads of movies on the werewolf, and they didn't. They only did the one movie, which is very strange, because everybody knows that the Universal Monsters Wolfman was a long-running uh, series. So this movie is really well cast. It's got Oliver Reed here as the, the man who turns into the wolf. And it's it's funny because these this this company here, Final Cut, they do release some of these movies, and they, they do a decent version of them, although the Studio Canal ones do the best ones. So for me, it would have been better coming out in Studio Canal, but it's still it's still a decent movie, and uh, it's another one that's me and the devs have got to get round to watch. I watched it years ago on TV, loved it, but I need to get it watched, rewatched with the devs, and we haven't got round to this one yet. So that's a curse of the werewolf. Next up is 1961's Captain Clegg. Now this is a funny movie because it's not really like a horror movie, even though it looks like a horror movie. It's more like a smuggling movie, and it's one of those ones that I've always wanted to see. I haven't watched it yet. And I think it's on a 1080p, 1080i rather than the 1080p. So the quality is a little bit less, but it's not too bad, actually. It does actually star Peter Cushion and Oliver Reed as well. So he must have come straight off the back of that one. You'll often find it. And obviously Yvonne Romain is on here and she was in that one as well. So it, it looks as if when you're in a contract with Hammer, you do a few films with them, maybe three or four. So that's a movie I haven't seen, but very interested to watch it. So that's Captain Clegg otherwise known as Night Creatures, which I think is a much better uh, title than Captain Clegg. I think it sounds a little bit weird. Next up is 1962's The Phantom of the Opera. Now, this is another one of these universal classics that uh, Hammer were getting around to make. They've done quite a few of them, although with the uh, glaring inconsistency with missing out the Invisible Man. You can't see the Invisible Man, but dumb tish. I do like the story of The Phantom of the Opera. I think it's a great tale to be told. And uh, there is a remastered version of this out. I think we're probably out with uh, Eureka, but I'm not too sure who's done this remastered version. I know this one's, it's all right, it's not too bad, but I know that the other one is much better. So that's the Phantom of the Opera. Next from 1963 is Paranoiac. As you'll see, Oliver Reed there making a return. Now, this movie is in black and white. It's a strange one to have a black and white one after all of those colour ones, because Hammer were put, putting out all these like really good technical movies. Now this movie is absolutely brilliant. It's released by Eureka actually. It's a strange release. It's a slim box by Eureka, which you don't find, you don't see very often at all. Now this movie is a great movie, I find. Now what happens is that Oliver Reed plays this sort of hard drinking man, which is a bit of an echo of his real life. And he's got a sister. That He's the brother and his sister is played by Jeanette Scott, who is a, is a brilliant actress. She's absolutely amazing in whatever she's in. And she he is trying to make her feel as if she's like like going mad and he wants to get her classed as insane so he can take all the inheritance of his if his uh of his parents well the inheritance that they're both going to get but the strange part about it is they had another brother who died a lot of years ago but he seems to be returning every time she looks and she sees this uh this brother or is she seeing him it's like a bit of a ghost tale amazing story i wasn't expecting anything like it but very highly rated, and it's not one that's talked about very much, so that's Paranoiac. Next up from 1963 is The Devil Rides Out. This is, I always thought that this was a later movie, I didn't think it was this early. Christopher Lee again, and you get Charles Gray, remember him from um, 
the Rocky Horror Picture Show. It's just a jump to the left. And it's a it's a good movie actually. It's one of those ones where I think you've got Christopher Lee playing this he's playing like a good guy for once, instead of some kind of evil villain. Big fan of these satanic movies, that's The Devil Rides Out. Next up is 1963's Kiss of the Vampire. This is the one that I haven't watched yet. I have put it on actually, and it looks pretty good, although it's final cut, so you don't want to see a final cut in the hammer movie, you know it's always going to be a bit of a lesser quality for whatever reason. I don't think they remorse them as well as they could do. And I don't know anything about this this movie at all, apart from obviously it's a it's a vampire movie. I probably have seen this back in the day, although I can't remember anything about it. So that's Kiss of the Vampire. Next up is 1964's The Evil of Frankenstein. Now this mo I said before that these movies have a different uh, monster in every single movie. Peter by it's Peter Cushion again. And these this is meant to be not one of the the better. Uh, Frankenstein movies, although I do enjoy them all. So you can see this is Frankenstein 3, if you had to put a number on it. And these these movies here, to me, I just like, I always watch them when I, I start watching them, I, I never go to like Evil of Frankenstein, I always watch them like in order. So every now and again, me and the Debs will watch them from back to front, which we really enjoy. So uh, not a bad, not a bad effort, I've got to say, but it's not one of the best ones, not one of the ones that kind of sticks in my mind. That's the Evil of Frankenstein. Next up is 1964's The Gorgon. I've just got this one. I have seen it back in the day, but I haven't watched this one yet. Me and the Debs are going to watch it. I keep seeing me and the Debs, which is quite a fan of uh, Hammer movies. I remember when I said to her, let's watch a couple of horror Hammer movies, and she was quite frightened of them. I says, well, there's not that to be frightened of, and she, she agreed, actually. So that's The Gorgon. Also from 1964 is The Curse of the Mummy's Tomb. You can see this is The Mummy 2. This is another one that we've got yet to watch. I remember what I watched these all back in the day. I can't remember too much about it, but another indicator at least, and it looks pretty good as well. There is a version going around that's a lesser version, an American U US disc, but uh, it's not half as good as this one. So that's The Curse of the Mummy's Tomb. Next is 1965's Die, Die, My Darling. This is a brilliant movie. Me and the Debs have just watched this recently, the other day actually, and we loved it. And it's all to do with the fact that Tallulah Bankhead plays this really puritanical woman who is holding Stephanie Powers to, to kind of hostage but there's a lot more to it than that really well done got some great stars in here and I highly highly recommend you see this one it's just one of the one of the best ones I've seen of these early Hammer ones it's not really like a horror film it's more like a psychological uh, movie so that's Die Die My Darling moving on to 1966 was it a good year for Hammer first up is Plague of the Zombies this is, it's a, it's a great movie actually, and as you can see, it's one of the very earliest um, zombie movies. Although, it's, to be honest, the, the zombies in here, I think they're great. I like the look of them and everything, but you know what, the zombies aren't in it that much. It's more to do with this 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 town, this sort of town in Cornwall, which I think is a, it's a great, it's a great app, it's a great, got a bit more of this going on, a bit more satanic, and it raises zombies. That's how the zombies come out of this, this, uh, this satanic person. Who has him for his army? Quite a little, uh, quite a good movie. It's one of the movies I always remember, and I, I do remember thinking that the Plague of the Zombies is just such a good title for a movie. So that's the Plague of the Zombies. Also from 1966, Christopher Lee made a return. Dracula, Prince of Darkness. This is the first time he's come back since the original Dracula from 1958. This is 1966, so we can so show you how long he's uh, missed, been missing from the franchise. And this was the first ever Hammer release that I got on Blu-ray way back in the day. I think, I'm sure this was 2010, 2011, uh, early 2011, I think. Great movie. But if you if you notice this movie, when you see him, Dracula does not talk at all in this movie. Because when he got his lines, he said, I'm not saying, I'll, I'll do the movie, but I don't want to do the lines. In fact, I'm just not going to say anything. I'm just going to kind of point. So it's quite a strange thing to think that he goes from talking quite a lot in the first track of the movie to not speaking at all, just like pointing and grunting, which is still is still good, still a good performance. So that's Dracula, Prince of Darkness. Next is The Reptile. This is, and it's funny because when you see these movies that were all filmed in 1966, you can, if you look at the sets, you can see the sets are the same sets. They've been changed a little bit, but you can really... You can see these um, these bits and pieces from these staircases and stuff. You think, hang on a minute, I've seen that before. Even some of the wallpaper is the same, but the, the sets, it's it's really good. 
Now this uh, this movie here, I think this is a great movie. This it was really one of these ones that used to kind of petrify us for some reason. I don't know why. When I watched this, I remember watching this uh, when I was a kid, and I really just didn't like this movie at all for the fact that it was just creepy. For this reptile person, just really freaked us out. I mean, obviously it doesn't these days, but it's it's amazing what these movies used to do to you when you were a kid. That's the reptile. Next up is Rasputin the Mad Monk. Now this is one of those movies where you think. This is a, is this a horror movie? I mean, I suppose it is because this character of Rasputin, although they do they don't really stick to the real history of Rasputin, they sort of they've embellished it quite a lot. They do make this kind of a sinister character, and Christopher Lee plays an absolutely brilliant part in it. I thought it'd be one of these ones where I would look at it and think, well, it's not that good. It's it's I'm just collecting them, but I was quite surprised in how good this was and it was and how watchable it was, mainly for the fact that Christopher Lee just being amazing as he is in everything. And he's got this really good persona when he plays Rasputin. So I highly recommend it, even if you might not think it's not like a Dracula or a Frankenstein movie. So that's Rasputin the Mad Monk. And the last movie from 1966 is one of my favourites, The Witches. Now a lot of people, when they're talking about Hammer movies, they say that this is like on, very low on the list. In fact, it's one of the worst Hammer movies, and I don't, I don't get that myself. I think that this movie is such a watchable movie. There's not much gore or anything like that. It's not like a horror movie. It's more like a voodoo movie, if you can if you can think that way. And I think it's it's quite good. It's one of a kind. It's not really another one that's like that. And the print on here is absolutely amazing. It's one of the ones when I first saw these these Blu-rays and thought, hang on a minute, the, the amazing quality you can get from these these old films, which on DVD sometimes look a bit ropey. And then when you put, they put them on here, and you think this is just exceptional. This was one of the first times that Blu-ray started. This is very early on in the days of me buying Blu-rays and this was one of the ones that was had that bit of a wow factor that you get from time to time. So that's the last movie from 1966, that's The Witches. Moving along to 1967, good year, you have Frankenstein Created Woman or Frankenstein 4. This is brilliant, I love this movie, this is my favourite Frankenstein movie, It's uh, it's got everything for me, just love it. And this isn't released in the UK, this is a US version. It isn't released in the, the UK on Blu-ray, sadly enough. This really does need to get, they do need, I think if it got like a box set of this Hammer stuff, it would be absolutely brilliant, especially like the, the Hammer, the Frankenstein franchise or the Dracula one, they put them in a big box set. I would love that type of thing, but maybe due to rights, that's never going to happen. You know, the old, the old classic rights problem. But this movie is just such a great tale and a spin on the whole Frankenstein sort of saga. And it's great that these Frankenstein movies, when you watch them, it's not as if you're watching the same movie time and time again. Every movie is different, which is something which I think is uh, one of the best things about the Frankenstein franchise, which makes them stand out a little bit more to the Dracula ones. I think I prefer the Frankenstein ones slightly over the Dracula ones. So that's Frankenstein Created Woman. Also from 1967 is The Mummy's Shroud or The Mummy 3. Now, this is the one that I watched a long time ago. I can't remember. I have watched the Blu-ray. It's, it's a stunning presentation, as all these, all these uh, Studio Canal Blu-rays are just amazing. They're, they're of absolutely great quality, so never think that you're going to get something a bit dodgy. The final cut ones are a little bit, you know, you think, hmm, I've, I've seen better. It was a bit of a shame because you used to get them all on Studio Canal, and Studio Canal said so they were going to release practically every single one. And, of course, they might have lost the rights to do that. But they've kind of tailed off from that. They don't release that much now, sadly, because when they do, they do a stellar version of it. So that's The Mummy Shroud. Also from 1967 is Quatermass in the Pit. This is, uh, I think, probably the third film in the Quatermass series. Maybe it's the, th I think there's only three of them. This is a great film. And it's got a got an amazing print on it. It comes from a TV series. Highly recommend this one. I would love them to do the other Quatermass and Quatermass 2. I'd love them to put them out. I don't know if that's again, that's I'm going to talk about this quite a lot. Rights issues. I think they plague this Hammer franchise, it's, uh, sadly, because you've got to go to a lot of different companies for these movies, which is it's a bit of a shame, but I thought it would be a bit more tidy when they got released. But obviously that's what happens, isn't it? So that's Quatermass in the pit. Next up is 1968, Dracula Has Risen from the Grave, or Dracula 4. This was one that I thought was... All right. When I when I first watched it, I remember thinking it was you know pretty good. But on a recent rewatch with the Debs, I found this was absolutely brilliant. I love this one. 
it was one of the ones that delivered a lot more than I originally thought. It's funny when you go back to these movies, as you do with a lot of movies, you'll go and think, oh, it was all right. And you've got like preconceptions of it. And then you watch it and you think, hey, that was that was a lot better than I thought it was going to be. A lot of these movies do uh, come across like that. So that's Dracula Has Risen from the Grave. Next up is 1969's Frankenstein Must Be Destroyed or Frankenstein 5. I don't know this on, on uh, Blu-ray yet, unfortunately. Now this movie here, it's not, I wouldn't say it's like shocking. I don't think any of them are shocking. But for some reason, this movie freaked me out when I was a kid. So the monster here is played by Freddie Jones, who was in The Elephant Man. Amazing actor. And for some reason, this just freaked me out. I think it's a part of it where he gets buried in the garden. And then this, this like water thing spurts out. I don't know why it freaked us out, but it really did. It was like such a... It just gives us nightmares, actually. And to be honest, I haven't got a clue why. But this is, this is another one. This is a great one. I'd love to get this on, on Blu-ray. It's probably been released on Blu-ray somewhere in the world. So that's Frankenstein Must Be Destroyed. So moving along to the 1970s. And the first one released was Taste the Blood of Dracula. Or Dracula 5. This is my favourite Hammer movie. I love this movie. It's got so much going for it. It's just one of those ones where it's got its perfection. It seems a little bit like the League of Gentlemen places. And you, if you watch it, you know what I mean. It's got a great story to it where you get this group of people who are kind of like churchgoers who at nights they want to go out with the, together and they go and seek these sort of de depraved acts. And they see this fella who says, look, I can give you, you can drink the blood of Dracula. I've got some powdered blood of Dracula. And they drink it and then all hell breaks loose. So it's all about, and then Dracula comes back and, and gets his own back on them kind of thing. And um, it's it's a it's a weird sort of like revenge as well. It's it's just got everything in it. If you want to see something that's got like a bit of every single sort of hammer, like horror trope in it, it's all in this movie. So that's highly, highly, highly recommended. My favourite Hammer movie of all time. That's Taste the Blood of Dracula. Next from 1970 is The Vampire Lovers. This stars the amazing Ingrid Pitt. Now, I showed this before, but I'll show it again. In there, I've got Ingrid Pitt's signature, which was signed for John Hall. John Hall got two signed, so it's obviously two John. Best wishes, Ingrid Pitt. Now, he's got one as well, and he gave me this one, which is absolutely amazing to think that Ingrid Pitt has signed this. I would love to have met her, but um, it's, just, it's just amazing that I've got this, this, this autograph. It's one of my prized possessions, actually. It always lives in here, although I might get it up on the wall someday, you never know. This is this every movie that stars Ingrid Pitt is always you know you're in for a uh, you're in for a treat, and yeah so this is one of the ones that the kind of the moved it they had like this running side by side with Dracula they never sort of amalgamated these ones with Dracula they, Dracula was a separate entity but they had these vampire movies which have got quite a few coming up so that's the vampire lovers next up from 1970 is Scars of Dracula or Dracula Six now this movie unfortunately it does suffer from the fact of having really bad casting here you get dennis waterman and jenny hanley cast now dennis waterman plays a kind of well-to-do posh young lad which doesn't suit him and jenny hanley just isn't what you would call a usual like hammer hammer woman it, it just i don't know it just doesn't work i do like the movie and I, christopher lee has started a talk this is the first movie where christopher lee actually speaks again in it for whatever reason and it's it's a decent movie, but it's definitely, for me, it's the lowest one of all the, 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 the Dracula ones. I think, unfortunately, it did just miss the mark because of this. I think the, the casting just didn't do any favours. So that's Scars of Dracula. Next from 1970 is The Horror of Frankenstein. Now, you might say this is Frankenstein number whatever, but I'm going to say this is it's a standalone Frankenstein. What had happened was, I think Peter Cushion, it fell out of love with with uh, Frankenstein character, so he said, "I'm not doing it anymore." So they thought, "Right, we'll start a new one off." So they started this off with um, Ralph Bates playing, you know, Baron Frankenstein. He plays an equally sort of sly, devious person, uh, but he's, he's it's nowhere near what Peter Cushing could de deliver. You've got Dave Prowse, Darth Vader, who's the monster in this one, and it's the one that looks the most like the Universal Horror Frankenstein, but not really. And this movie is meant to be a bit more like a comedy. Now, I haven't watched this one, at, apart from back in the day. I do need to get the devs in to watch this one. But it doesn't really fit in with the rest of them, so it's kind of like a standalone 
um, movie that they made maybe to reboot the Frankenstein franchise but they didn't they kind of left it alone at this one maybe it was a big flop I don't know so that's a quite a strange one it's in the Frankenstein it's in the Frankenstein run but not in the Frankenstein run that's the horror of Frankenstein next up is 1971's Lust for a Vampire this is one of the other ones that they're doing which is uh, not Christopher Lee canon and yeah they, they did sort of like at this point they were starting to take it up a bit of a ramp these movies are starting to get a bit more risque for the time i think the censors had kind of you know let a lot more things go through and hammer were pushing the boundaries a little bit with these movies and they were trying to get more and more things that they couldn't it more blood more gore more you know stuff going on but i think that these movies are all very watchable and they're all different actually the the quite Good little stories in themselves so that's lust for a vampire next release from 1971 was countess dracula this stars ingrid pitt again and this is another one of these movies where it's like a kind of standalone movie and it's to do with the kind of the retelling of the elizabeth bathory story where this this i think it was actually in real life where this woman used to think that bathing in like young girl's blood was a way of retaining eternal youth and this is a play on that one. I don't think it's like a vampire movie to, as such. It's more the fact of this this whole blood ritual thing that she's trying to like retain her youth. Um, and when she bathes in the blood, obviously she goes in as an old woman, comes out as like a young person. And it's all about that. Quite a good story, actually. I remember uh, really enjoying this back in the day. And I've watched this again quite recently. And I think this is one of the ones where these these hammer ones... That I love this like little this vampire sort of subsidiary that they did. And they brought these characters into play. Great release by Network. Find quite a few of the horror films from Hammer on Network as well. So that's Countess Dracula. Also from 1971 is another one of my favourites. It is Twins of Evil. This is on the Synapse label. This is Region A locked. And I think you can actually get this in the UK. I think it's on Network actually. And great film. Love this film. I've always liked it. You've got Peter Cushion in here. And he plays an absolute uh, swine in this movie. He's so puritanical and he doesn't like the fact that these twins come and he doesn't like them being in the house at all. And it, of course they get turned into vampires and that, that doesn't end up too well for him. So he doesn't like the fact that they can just, you know, they've got this kind of rebellious nature about them. It's a great little film and it's one of the ones that I always like watching on the TV at, back in the day. That's Twins of Evil. Also from 1971, what a good year this was, is Blood from the Mummy's Tomb. Now I've just got this one very recently. And uh, can't wait to watch it. I think I'll watch the, I think I'll get the four mummies out. Me and the Debs will watch the four mummy movies because this is mummy movie number four. Try and say that after 14 pints. So yeah, so again, it just looks spectacular on Blu-ray. And I can't wait to watch this. I have watched this back in the day. I just can't remember anything about it. So that's Blood from the Mummy's Tomb. Next day released, Dr. Jekyll and Sister Hyde. This is a great play on Jekyll and Hyde. But the fact is when Dr. Jekyll played by Ralph Bates, he's obviously doing his run of Hammer movies. He goes and takes his portion and he turns into a woman. So this is a really good spin on this movie and I'll tell you what, the print on here is absolutely amazing as well. So that's Dr. Jekyll and Sister Hyde. Next up, and the last one from 1971 is Hands of the Ripper. Now this is from Network and I remember watching this and this is, it's kind of like, it's about uh, the Jack the Ripper but it's got a bit of a, a play on it which I'm not going to tell you because it's kind of a massive spoiler, but it's quite a good little, like, not who done it, but obviously nobody knows who Jack the Ripper is, but this is a really good um, spin on the Jack the Ripper tale. So that's Hands of the Ripper. So moving on to 1972, and you've got another great release, Vampire Circus. This is released by Synapse. And I think you'll probably get this in the UK as well, on Network, or some, something like that. This is a great movie. I love this movie. It's one of those ones that they did move it up a little bit of a notch in the way of what they showed, how explicit this movie was. It's not too bad by the, today's standards, of course, but it was a little bit more than you, you saw before. And they, I think they were pushing the boundaries quite a bit. I think this is probably the one that pushed the boundaries the most. This is a really good movie, actually, and it's uh, one of those ones that it's just standalone, but it's got a great take on the fact of the circus travels around from here to there, but they're full of vampires. I like that, actually. So that's Vampire Circus. Next up is Dracula AD 1972, from 1972, or Dracula 7. This is a great present presentation from uh, the premium collection from HMV. I love this uh, 
the way this, this these movies look. Love the way they've used the original artwork. Love this movie as well. It is 1972 personified. The way that the, uh, the people go on, they've got all this. The jargon from 1972, it's got the amazing Caroline Monroe in as well. She's always welcome in the Hammer movie, even though she didn't do that many. And this is one of the best. It's it's very much of its time, but I like it because it's that. Because it's it's just so 70s, it's unreal. So that's a great entry into the, um, the Dracula franchise. That's Dracula AD 1972. Next up is 1972's Fear in the Night. This has got a great cast in here. You've got Judy Jason, who is, feels like she's getting hunted by somebody. You've got Peter Cushion, who's married to Joan Collins in the film, believe it or not. And she's married to Ralph Bates. Now, this is one I haven't seen. I've seen it back in the day. I remember, actually, I remember that Peter Cushion was very uh, ominous in it. So it's one of those ones that I will get the depths to watch. I don't know if she goes too much towards these psychological ones. I think she prefers, like, the gothic horror ones. But... Um, Again, it looks brilliant on Blu-ray, so that's Fear in the Night. Next came 1972's Demons of the Mind. Now, this is a movie that I can't really remember anything about. I remember putting it on and thinking it looks great, but I haven't got a clue what it's about. It looks very um, gothic in its uh, presentation, but don't know anything more about it. It's another one. And the, the quite. I've watched most of these movies, but I think this is one of the ones I probably haven't seen back in the day, one of the rare ones I haven't seen back in the day, or I have no recollection of. So that's Demons of the Mind. Next is 1973's The Satanic Rites of Dracula, or Dracula 8. This is, it's, to be honest, this is the last one that Christopher Lee starred as Dracula in. And it's not the best one for me. I do think that I'll prefer more, it's one of the, the least enjoyable ones. It's still alright, don't get us wrong. But I feel it's a bit, they've moved into a different time. And it's a bit like a cop drama rather than a Dracula movie. You'll know what you mean if you've seen the movie. But it's in it's more like a sequel to Dracula AD 1972 because he comes from being out from the, the uh, like the historical Dracula into modern day times, which is great in Dracula AD, AD 1972. But in this one, he plays more of a second fiddle, fiddle to the, the the cops that are trying to catch him from the, the other movie, the previous movie. So it lets it down a slight bit, but it's a great way to sort of continue this movie on. It's like a direct sequel, like more than most of them are. So that's The Satanic Rites of Dracula. Next up is 1974's Frankenstein and Monster from Hell, or Frankenstein 6. This is the last Frankenstein movie in the Hammer series, and I want to thank my good friend Dennis McCulloch for sending this across to me. Remember when he, he put the, the Lauren Hardy things on the on the card there? They are still there. And this is, this is a great movie. This is a great presentation. Also, I do have as well, I do have the second sight version of this and i do hope that second sight get their hands on a few more of these to release which is would be absolutely brilliant to have them on the shelves and also a big thanks to dennis mcculloch that's frankenstein and the monster from hell next up from 1974 is the legend of the seven golden vampires or dracula 9 this is the last one that ever released now this movie sadly does not feature christopher lee it just has this he was going to be in it but the that cut his part down to practically nothing in it and put this other actor into it and it does let the movie down because of that but apart from that this movie is so watchable it's a brilliant movie it's like kung fu because obviously bruce lee movies were out at the time so it's like kung fu mixed with with dracula and i i find this movie to be absolutely brilliant me and the devs watched it well we thoroughly enjoyed it obviously there's a blu-ray out there in the us which was like very expensive but i have heard it's coming out in the blu-ray and uh, blu-ray form in the uk hopefully so that would be amazing to get that because this movie is such an enjoyable movie. It looks quite good on DVD, but obviously this is a terrible cover, this. It's one of the worst covers I've ever seen. It doesn't make you want to watch it, does it? But it's still really a fun watch, and that's a brilliant title. So that's The Legend of the Seven Golden Vampires. So finally is 1976's To the Devil a Daughter. This, I believe, was probably the last Hammer horror movie. I think they released a couple more after this, but then they were kind of done. To be honest, I haven't watched this. I've watched this one years ago. I have not watched this one recently at all. Do want to get this one. As I, like I say, I like these satanic ones. Christopher Lee, for some reason, is always amazing in these movies. He just he just adds something to it, which is he's, he's like the best person to get in these satanic movies. And I think he does this character or these characters that don't intertwine with each other. They sort of standalones, but I think he does them best out of any Hammer actor that I've seen. So. 
Phew, after all that, and I hope that this, this rough cut here is one hour 20 minutes. I hope this is not going to be that for the one that you watch. I hope it's a lot shorter. So, thanks for watching. You take care, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Thank you.